Hi, Olivia here. This video will focus on the income and cost sliders, as well as the parking sliders. Let's jump right in. We've included a series of cost and income sliders in order to allow you to adjust from that baseline national data into your local uh, market data. And these sliders have been grouped into a series of panels that are included in the general assumptions. So your project cost panels, um, project cost sliders that include purchasing of the land, dem demolishing any existing structure, the hard cost, heights and setbacks, um, the building setbacks, and these will go into a little bit more in detail in a later tutorial, and your use assumptions. So whatever uses you turned on will show up here. For example, if you were to turn on office, you will see office show up here, hotel, the same. And each of these panels have a series of lighters that are specific for that use. So multifamily, of course, has your units, um, how big they're going to be, if there's loss factor and amenities. Um, how much you're going to make per unit. So if we increase the two bedrooms and the three bedrooms, you have a different income assumption for each of these units. In retail, there are no units, so it's all about leasable space and gross buildable space. Um, your income, expense reimbursements, vacancy and operating expenses. And in parking, we have the ability to add parking. Um, for example, right now I have parking at 100% reduction uh, and I have it at two parking spaces per unit and three spaces per every 1,000 square foot of commercial. So if I was to get rid of the reduction, we would have all the parking that was actually required by code in this building. So as we remove some retail, the parking also adjusts Let's put retail on the ground floor. And if we were going to remove some units, that parking will adjust automatically. In some cases, you can have a parking reduction. Um, in some cities, depending on if you're near public transportation, you might have a 100% reduction. So we give you a lot of flexibility to work with your municipality and test what would be the most uh, profitable and um, what would be the best for the community. So in, in terms of the slider itself, um, here, let's go to the multifamily. Um, you select the, the toggle on the slider and you're able to move that and, and see all the numbers change. You can also input the number that you'd like. Let's say I wanted um, 30 or 40, one bedrooms and 20 studios. You can just input that number into the input box. Um, as well as I want these studios to be 450 square feet and I'd like to charge 1500 for them which means I'll probably charge a little bit more for my one bedroom so say 1800 so you can input the sliders if that input number was higher than your maximum you can also change your maximum so if I wanted to have more than 200 units or 224 units I can change this to any number I'd like, and now I can do 800 units if I'd like, which makes for a very tall building. Oh yeah. So the idea is to give you maximum flexibility and allow you to adjust all the minimums and maximums in order to fit any need of your specific city. Now you understand how to adjust all the income and cost sliders to quickly refine your real estate deal. If you have any questions, please get in touch through our user feedback feature. In the next video, we will go over all the KPIs and how to use them to track zoning metrics.